uh, when we look at how ABA is related to school or teaching, uh, mm -hmm. we look at, you know, not only the academic skills themselves, but also what are other skills that the child needs to be ready to learn, you know, to right. have that learning readiness. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, there are so many pre-academic and readiness skills that we can work on, like attending to a task, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's hard for a child to be able to complete a task if they're not attending to the task. Or mm -hmm. um, how to ask for help, perhaps, when they, they have a task that is difficult for them and then we see problem behavior happening because they don't know, they don't have those communication skills and, you know, I need a break or, you, you know, I need help with this. Um, having to transition from one task to another or, you know, from mm -hmm. a little break, back to work and how that works right. and how that goes. So mm -hmm. um, following directions within the learning uh, time, um, perhaps working on tolerating to sit down, right, and remaining mm -hmm. seated for the entire learning time. Um, and even things as simple as waiting, waiting for, you know, for somebody to help him, waiting for somebody to give the answers, to check the work or mm -hmm. for materials to be ready for the lesson to start. So right. there's just a lot of different readiness uh, skills that we can work on um, through ABA. And the foundation of um, our treatment is reinforcement. So reinforcement is basically um, manipulating the environment in a sense that is going to motivate that child to engage mm -hmm. in perhaps those skills that are harder or that are not as preferred. So having right. to, you know, sit down for a while doing math may not be something extremely preferred or maybe just difficult. Mm -hmm. So right. how can we motivate that child to do this aversive task? And perhaps we want to add or remove something in the environment that is going to keep that motivation going. Right. I know a lot of parents ask, you know, how, how do I motivate my child? And to have a third party person to come in and, and help you figure that out is, is a really good thing because a lot of times you're so entrenched in it and all you can see is the behavior yeah. and you're just upset at the child and not really realizing what's going on that's causing that and, and how you can use a positive approach to get them to be yes. motivated in the right direction. Definitely. So, yes. A lot of the times what we see problem behavior, especially around academic tasks, is that they lack different foundation skills. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. child may not be able to communicate something. That's, you know, typically the main issue is that the child lacks those communication skills. So uh, how do, exactly. can we work on those communication skills mm -hmm. before we, you know, how to teach him math or reading? Mm -hmm. um, and then also a lot of the times, you know, we observe this uh, happen constantly, you know, like, oh, but my child, you know, loves Legos. He could play Legos all day long. Mm -hmm. But guess what? When I ask him to do his homework for Legos, he doesn't want to do homework. You know, it's still not right. motivating enough. Mm -hmm. So we do have to uh, use specific assessment procedures to find out, okay, well, he mm -hmm. may have, you know, a very specific interest for these Legos, but it's not enough for him to work for them. Uh, so yeah. how can we promote that, you know, we increase his motivation, what other resources can we use to motivate mm -hmm. him? Mm -hmm. So we definitely work with the family uh, on assessing that motivation for the child.